Hey everybody, Kyle here from Casual Core, and I would like to welcome you to my Act 2 impressions of Torchlight 2. Holy crap, that is a lot of twos to say in one sentence. Anyway, you may be wondering why I didn't do another written and picture article, and that's because I wanted to do something a little more true to Casual Core's origins, and that is audio, sometimes video. Now, for you folks subscribed just via iTunes, I am going to go ahead and apologize because you're missing a bunch of really cool footage of the game itself, and for those of you listening and watching on YouTube, welcome and please subscribe. With that pandering out of the way, I would like to touch on a couple of things that I sort of touched on in the article for Act 1, but didn't really go too far in depth in. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about, because it's really visually striking, is the landscape. Uh, this landscape for, um, for, for the Act 2 is very wide open, much more so than Act 1, and very, very desolate. That being said, it doesn't seem like they just threw in a desert level to make it lazy. I mean, you know, there's there's stuff, there's bones, there's little footprints and markings and fossils, you know, and columns. A lot of features, like distinct features in the land that, you know, you can follow to get around. But it never feels like the landscape is overly peppered. It actually does a really good job of conveying that uh, desolate, almost desperate and empty feeling. Um, another really cool thing about how the landscape looks is it's not entirely flat. If you guys remember Diablo 2, uh, Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction even, the, the landscape wall had a couple like walls and, you know, rock paths and stuff. It was all pretty level. With, with this, uh, you walk through a lot of sand dunes, which is really cool because you're walking at different, you know, inclines and it changes how things look and it just adds a little more, um, I can't believe I'm saying this, realism to a game that really doesn't need it, but it really benefits from. So, I mean, that is definitely something that I'm really, really impressed by for Act 2, is this desert landscape. Uh, very cool. Uh, on top of that, something that I noticed in Act 2 that wasn't so noticeable in Act 1 was the enemy models. Now, the enemy models in Act 1 are awesome, don't get me wrong, they're fantastic, they look great, but there's something about the enemy models in Act 2 that I really, really took notice to. I, I hope you guys all get a chance to check it out and play it, but if not, there are a lot of, like, sand-based creatures, obviously, because it's a desert, but on top of that, there's a lot of, like, sand-based people. They are, you know, they're wearing you know, desert garb, stuff like that, but they're, like, desert ninjas, which is weird. Uh, I don't actually remember what they're called, and I feel like a bad person for not remembering, but basically, you're running around, and you're fighting all of these monsters, and on top of that, you're fighting, basically, Tusken Raiders that are human. It's kind of cool, and there's definitely a few, you know, Star Wars nods in there. It really looks like it to me, anyway. Uh, so, again, the enemy models in Act 2 are stand out much more to me than Act 1 did. Uh, moving on to something that I didn't talk about in Act, the Act 1 preview at all, and that is weapons. Now, weapons in Act 1 are, are plentiful, and there is much you can do, but it just they're starter weapons, and while you can kind of, I don't know, you can kind of get a feel for how the weapons are going to, you know, drop and what you're going to be able to do with them, I personally don't think the weapons really come into their own until Act 2. Actually, for that matter, I don't necessarily think the gear comes into its own until Act 2, which is totally fine. You're getting a feel for the game in Act 1, you're learning the story in case you've never played Torchlight before, and you're really, again, you're getting like this, this overall idea of what the game is about. In Act 2, you understand, you know what the game is about, and it's time to start focusing on your badass weapons and gear. Um, I'm really bad at this part of, of action RPGs. Uh, I've, I did it all throughout Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. I did it all through Diablo 3. Um, I just, I never pick up the right weapons or I never use the right, like, perfect weapons for me. I probably end up selling them because I'm greedy or I'm dumb and don't pick them up, whatever. That being said, in Torchlight 2, I have found myself actually very cognizant of what's going on with my stats when it comes to weapons. I'm comparing every piece of, uh, clothing or uh, weaponry that I pick up before I sell it. I am making sure that anything that's close, I do a stat comparison and all that other fun stuff. I think it has a lot to do with how the interface is laid out for Torchlight 2, which again, I touched on in Act 1. Um, but really, again, it's more noticeable in Act 2 when you're doing stuff like quick swapping between weapons to make sure you have the right stats and all that other fun stuff. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this Act 2 impressions piece is the question that I posed in Act 1 and the statement that I made during Episode 24 of the show, and that is Torchlight 2 being my game of the year, even though I based that entire thing off of a 15 minute demo that I played at PAX. Again, I realize how stupid as a journalist that makes me sound, and as a fan I just kinda cringe knowing that that's not how we do things. That being said, I have now spent 
almost 10 hours playing the game. I am two-thirds of the way through, and I don't think I'm going to recant my statement yet. I mean, I have found nothing wrong with this game. There's nothing I raise issue with. Everything I've seen so far is is leaving it a Game of the Year contender. Now, don't get me wrong, obviously there are games that have yet to come out for 2012 and I have yet to play them. That being said, currently Torchlight 2 is still sitting at my number one spot. I haven't played anything yet that is more impressive. I have found literally nothing wrong with this game through two acts. I've only got one more to go and unless they completely botched the ending, which I don't think they have, this game is going to be damn near perfect. I am beyond impressed. I really can't wait for Act 3. Uh, I don't see it being any less fun. As a matter of fact, I see the awesomeness level ramping up quite high. So stay tuned for the Casual Core Act 3 preview of Torchlight 2, and then obviously stay tuned for our full-on review where Andrew and I sit down and thoroughly discuss the game. Thank you so much for checking out my Act 2 preview of Torchlight 2. You can check us out at casualcorecast.com. You can follow us on Twitter, which is at casualcorecast. Again, that's at casualcorecast. And you can follow my personal account, which is at cascorekyle. That's C-A-S-C-O-R-E, Kyle, all one word. Thanks again for watching and listening. I am Kyle Drakis Manchester. You guys have a good one.